Hello everyone, welcome to our bonus episode for this week. We're doing a classic character profile of Candy Stowe. Which make it sound so exciting. It's, it's time for everyone to sit down and pay attention as we tell you about one of the <laughs> what are you going least for interesting... Ah, oh, how rude! <laughs> Do you not... I mean, look, it's, okay. It's taken us nearly 600 episodes to get to her character profile. <clears throat> she was a good character... But did she have any good stories? We'll, well find out. We, we, we the, the reason that we've decided to do this week is, um, well, one, because we wanted something that was maybe going to be a bit short, because poor Aunt Gemma's still recovering from her appendix operation, but also because um, Nikki Sanderson won... Oh, that was a posh way of saying it, wasn't it? Sorry, Nikki Sanderson, as they say up north, got the Outstanding Achievement Award in the Inside Soap Awards just a couple of weeks ago. Was it last week, in fact? And um, Which is an amazing achievement. I was really, really pleased to hear I'm her chuffer, get that. Yeah. I'm mega chuffed for her, because those are the kinds of awards that usually go for the, you know, the, um, the golden... Oldies. I was starting off by making it sound um, more, well, less insulting, but then it just turned out anyway. Usually the characters who've been in shows for a jolly long time get those kind of awards, don't they? But um, yeah, Nikki Sanderson, she she made a cut of teeth in Coronation Street, moved on to Hollyoaks, been there for 10 years or so. Seems to be doing quite well for herself. So I was absolutely uh, thrilled to see her getting that. She was definitely the character underused in Coronation Street, but I'm sure there'll be plenty for us to talk about today as we go through her main stories. And then maybe it will will spark some uh, memories for for some of us. Yeah, what did you guys think of Candice when she was in the show? I quite liked it. Tell us now, then listen to the episode, and then then tell us again afterwards. Oh yeah, I forgot that she did that. So Candice was like the ultimate side character. She was in it from 1999 to 2005, so (coughs) six years of Candice on the street. Yet throughout all that time, she was very much a side character, wasn't she? She had a couple of stories, but she was really Sarah's wingman. That's definitely what she was brought in for, at least, anyway. Yeah, Sarah's friend. Sarah's friend. Particularly when um, Sarah Louise was recast as Tina O'Brien for the pregnancy story, Candice was like the... She was kind of like the edgier mate, wasn't she? Sarah Louise was often, you know, the, the goody ma- two-shoes a, a little, little bit. Yeah. yeah, and I know she got pregnant when she was only little Naughty. and everything. But Candice was more the streetwise teen. Yeah. And, like, when Sarah... There's thought that she was being rebellious, then Candice was always a lot more. But but Candice wasn't like... I, I wouldn't say that she was a, a a horrible teen. She wasn't a tearaway teen. She wasn't, you know, like we're seeing with Mason in Coronation Street. She, she wasn't say. like that at all. She was just... She was just streetwise, I think. And and I think as we go through this, we see that she had a bit of a, a rough upbringing and she was forced to maybe grow up and mature a bit a bit earlier because her, her parent, well, her mum at least, uh, wasn't so good. So I, I'm looking forward to reminding you all of, uh, of Candice's best stories. And, you know, maybe you'll change your mind on her. I would say that, you know, I don't think badly about Candice. I just didn't have much of an opinion on her. But having rewatched some of her on Classic Coronation Street on ITV3, I mean, we're like four years into her tenure now, I've definitely gained a newfound appreciation of the character, um, especially recently with some of the things that have been going on with uh, with her and her mum or and, and her stepdad. So, yeah, I, I, I like Candice. I, I think we liked her at the time. The only thing that I remember that you ever used to talk about a Candice is her lovely little nose, didn't you? She's got a cute nose. Tiny little nose, apparently. I, I she don't looks know. Like, she, she reminds me of Sandra Bullock. Yes, yeah, I see, I see what you're going for there. I think that's hopefully a compliment. So, um, yeah, Gemma, can you give us a rundown, please, of Candice Stowe's vital statistics <laughs> I don't know what her measurements were well I mean that's but we might be able to find out later because she was a model on Coronation Street for a bit that's true she was born on the 20th of September 1986 to parents Bill and Marion Stowe she was married in 2007 which is, is not when she was in the no, show no uh, two years after the show she got married so there's there's something to come back to if the character does return first appeared on the 5th of November 1999 Last appeared on the 7th of November 2005. She was in 400 episodes. That's nice, isn't played it? Played by Nikki Sanderson. Nice, yeah, nice, nice round number November. of episodes. From the 5th of November one year to the 7th of November another year. This was, yeah, as neat as a little nosy was Candice's <laughs> appearance in Coronation Street. Um, and, and it all got started in 1999. Um, this I'm I'm pretty sure this was I'm gonna say within weeks of Tina O'Brien being cast as Sarah Louise. I might be completely wrong on that one, but um, she was there trying to get Sarah to join her in a smoke. She didn't vape, she like didn't you said, vape. but she was having a go at cigarettes. And then her first appearance, I think that pretty much uh, fell by the wayside pretty early on. But it was a way of establishing, oh, she's a bit edgy this one. 
Mm. Because back, I don't know when you know teenage teens don't smoke anymore particularly, do they? Vaping is the thing. Although there was there was something in the news just a couple of days ago about uh, Rishi Sunak wanting to do the thing where you oh, yeah. increase the age of uh, yeah fourteen where you can buy cigarettes and yeah current fourteen year olds will never be old enough to be able to buy uh, and, uh, buy, buy cigarettes. cigarettes. And other countries have done that successfully. <laughs> but anyway, this was our this is our introduction to to candy. Go on. They haven't done it successfully. They've started doing it. They've, they've had a go. They've had a go. I know, but you can't really judge it on like how many years. Well, we'll just have all to it takes is for somebody to come in to government and say that is a dumb idea. I'm changing it. Mm. Anyway, anyway, um, Haley ends up catching them, and um, they're made to hand over their cigarettes, and that's the end of that. And oh. she she basically just does a load of general hanging around on the street for five episodes in '99. When I was looking through Coropedia, which is my go-to source for all my Coronation Street information for this, um, I was I, I went down, and you know you know they have a. For the, for the number of appearances and then they list all the episodes that the characters are in. Part of my hardcore research for today, I opened up every single one of those 400 Coropedia pages. Really I did, did, I did. Every single one. Because I, wa- I, wanted to, I wanted to get a full and thorough story about Candice. And the th- thing was, I'm going to say over half of those episodes only mentioned her in the cast list. So she didn't have anything oh, to do yeah. in the slot. So open it. No, she's just a bit. Next one. Next one. So she really was just a side character. I can like hang him down, hang him around the street with Sarah, walking down the cobbles, maybe a, a a box of chips in her hand. So it was you know a couple of hours it took me to go through there, but yeah, it's um this, this is the this is the full and frank story. She just minded her own business. She was. She was. And yeah, she didn't want the drama, I guess. Mm. Well, two thousand, the millennium <laughs> time. She was taken on as a paper girl at the cabin for a bit, but that didn't last too long because the main drama started pretty early on in the year when Sarah Louise found that she was pregnant. Only 12 years old, Gemma. Only 12. That's terrible. Um, so Sarah confided in Candice about <laughs> this and said, look, you've got to keep it quiet. But Candice did not keep it quiet before long the word spread at school to be fair on her she was trying to defend Sarah there was this bully character called Kirsten and she was making fun of Sarah and saying oh, look how fat she's getting recently and Candice blurts out oh yeah well she's pregnant actually but oh, Sarah dummy. Sarah not so pleased it's a bit like Billy's talking to her that guy in the other night's episode of Coronation Street saying well my husband's dying actually like Maybe now there's no not need the time. For the drama. Anyway, so um, Sarah comes back to school because she's she's been away. Um, Candice stands by her side against evil Kirsten. So we also fairly early on in two thousand get the first appearance of Candice's mum, Marion. She she made like five or six appearances in the whole thing, and you definitely get the idea that she was. I think she was a bit of a. I don't. I wouldn't go so far as to say neglectful, but. She she let Candy. That's so fair. Yeah, she let Candice bring herself up, but she did think that the sun shone out of Candice's. You know what? Um, I think it's a uterus. Oh, but mate, no, no, there was nothing going in or out Candice's uterus at that at so. this point. But Candice's mum said that Sarah. That's a different story. She said that Sarah was a bad influence on Candice because she was up the duff and refused to let the two girls see each other. Well, Gail wasn't having any of that. She marched round the Stowe's house, had a go at Mrs. Stowe, saying, well, actually, it's Candice who's the bad influence. So, <laughs> to you, Mrs. Oh Stowe. God. So, um, Candice... There's, you, you'll see as this story goes on, there's an awful lot of Sarah and Candice falling out and then making up again pretty soon afterwards. And the first one here was when Candice started hanging out with, you'll never guess, Gemma, Bully um, Kirsten. What? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know that the person who was made being horrible to Sarah, Candice is now a friend because she just desperately wanted to be cool, I think. Um, and you know, you're not going to get so cool hanging around with Sarah Louise. She, to, to her, appearance and um, popularity and, and and all of that was so, so important about how she looked and everything. And she thought that by hanging out with Kirsten, she was in the in crowd. And she started dating 16-year-old Darren Michaels. Yeah? Wow. Wow, I know. Well, tell you what, there's something about Darren Michaels we'll find out about later. I can't remember whether it's it. Um, yes, it's here. It's, it's Darren. Yeah. Darren Michaels. Guess he played him. Um, <laughs> Bruno Langley. Oh, I was going to say Bruno McCann. Langley. He went on to play Todd Grimshaw, <laughs> played Darren Michaels for one episode. And it wasn't even at this. It was a bit later. So there's a bit more confusion about that later. So word continues to spread about Sarah Louise's pregnancy. Blanche is having a go at Sarah. Candice defends her. So they make up and it's all okay. So then... Right. 
I know it's good, isn't it? So Candice ends up going to Bethany's christening when she when she's born, <coughs> not before, and she lies to her mum about where she's been. So she she goes to the christening. This is where we meet Darren, played by Bruno Langley. Mrs. Stowe finds out about it and makes a big scene at the christening, drags Candice away from it, saying, you're not having anything to do with that slag Sarah Louise Platt. You can't catch pregnancy. No, but you can get ideas, can't you? You're like, that's not so bad. Yeah, ooh, uh, lovely party for a baby. You get a party. Nice, you get, to nice. get some little clothes. silver trinkets and, and yeah. goblets and things. Yeah, a teething lovely. ring. Yeah, exactly. I like... Yeah, so Mrs. Stowe's like, no, not for my daughter, thank you very much. Get out of here. In October, Candy starts work experience at the salon, which would uh, be well, eventually be her cool. place of work, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and there was also a really funny. Cause I remember watching this a few years ago when it was on Classic. Vikram Desai ends up flirting with Candy and dating her. Now he's um, she, he was seven years her senior. But because she, you know, wanted to appear older than she actually was, and she had put on the makeup and everything and the the more grown up clothes, he thought that he was going out with someone more her own age. She was fourteen. Or his own he, age. His own age. She was fourteen. He was twenty one. And she's we, just she's thrilled to be asked by you know this older, more experienced man. Little problematic, and it but it doesn't last long. It goes it goes uh, wrong for him when he takes her to the Rovers for a drink, and she's like, um, <laughs> and then Rita tells Vic cram that candice is actually only 14 and he Can't like top, i'm not going out with you not having any of this off you go so candice is left heartbroken by poor vic cram uh, by, by evil vic cram or by not evil it's not evil to dump a 14 year old if you're 21 is it i think it's expected i think maybe he didn't let her down as gently as he might do but anyway did you tell her the father christmas wasn't real <laughs> Candice and Sarah have another massive bust up over Christmas because Sarah starts dating this this guy called Glenn doesn't tell him about Bethany even though Candy says no you need to you need to tell this guy that you're going out with your mum and um, this is the and Sarah and her have a big falling out about the whole thing and that takes you through to Christmas 2000 so I, I know that I know that he would he was a similar age right but the somehow Glenn Maybe the name Glenn. It makes me sound like he's already got five kids of his own, <laughs> and he lives in a terrace house and he drives a Ford Fiesta. Maybe Do you know? Yeah, Glenn. It's Glenn. a very safe name. Gemma, what happened in two thousand and one to Candice? Well, Sarah confides in Candice. She thinks Glenn's only interested in her because she's easy. <laughs> and Ke- and she's not. Re- it's a reputation that lasts, isn't it? Really. Well, she's certainly not done much to. <laughs> Twenty years later, and she's still spreading her legs for no, all you and can't sundry. Say that. Candice, <laughs> I said, I said it. Candice says that Glenn's been spreading rumours that they've already slept together. Yeah. So she doesn't like that, does she? No. Sarah shows an interest in Jason. No, she doesn't. Candice does. Nobody likes it. My, my, my notes make full sense here, Gemma. I just oh, don't... Re- Go on. Candice, starts, yeah, she starts fancying Jason Grimshaw. She's disappointed to hear that he... She thinks he... He thinks she's too young. But, you know, in life experience, she's, like, really old now because yeah. she's had a kid. Yeah. And Todd was a bit... I mean, Jason was a bit of a man-child, wasn't he? He was. He still is. Mm. Probably. <clears> However, <throat> Jason... Todd tells Sarah he fancies Candice... Despite the fact that Sarah's got a heart set on Todd. It is all very complex. It's all Sarah just fancies children. Todd. Candice fancies Jason. Todd fancies Candice. And somewhere in there, probably Todd and Jason. There, there's probably a fan fiction about that somewhere yeah. online. Candice asks Todd Only out. Only half brothers. He agrees, puts Sarah's nose out of joint, and then Eileen was worrying that Candice is too mature for him. Mm. Candice. The cat just did a hiccup. Candy starts. <laughs> <laughs> Candy starts dating Todd, despite the fact she's officially with Darren. Yeah, so this is where it gets confusing. So Darren was the guy that was played by Bruno Langley the previous year. He's not been seen apart from that Bethany christening episode. But then, come um, spring two thousand and one, her new boyfriend. Is also played by Bruno Langley. So she's two timing him with himself in a way. <laughs> I can see what the attraction is. Yeah, she's, she's got but a I'm type. I'm sorry, I thought you were the same, I thought you were the same guy. <laughs> How am I supposed to be able to tell that you're a different exactly. character? <laughs> right. So then, yeah, so Todd finds out about this and dumps her, and there's an episode which has got this Darren in, now recast as somebody else. 
So Darren, what was his name? Darren, I can't remember, was played by Bruno for one episode, someone else for this other episode, because they couldn't have the original actor because he was... <laughs> in the show. <laughs> they obviously just saw something in Bruno Langley and they thought, were like, we'll keep him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Todd Steen finds out dumps her, but then he agrees to try again when she says she's going to dump Darren anyway. Yeah, so Candy's Todd still together. And then we get Sam Kingston. Masked Python. Who, um, yeah, everybody loves him. Yeah, she gets, um, je- Candice gets jealous when Sam Kingston takes Sarah for a spin in his sports car. Because Sam, I can't remember what the age difference was here, but I'm going to say that Sam, being a stripper, a probably older. not, yeah, probably not the same age as Sarah Louise and Candice. And Candice, you know, she wants the older guy, doesn't she? She wants someone who's got a bit of maturity and experience. So yeah, she's not, not too impressed when Sarah Louise, um, is shown favour by well, him. She's mad, yeah. She's not. She's impressed, but not not in a good way. No, because <laughs> you're impressed in a bad way. Well, she's impressed, like, oh, that's cool, but I wish it was me. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. Get it. So, um, Candice introduces Sarah to online chat rooms. Mm-hmm. Bad move, bad idea. Yeah. Before long, Sarah's admitting to Candice she's found someone online. He's called TJ. Mm. I mean, I'd go, I'd go for that too. Imagine having TJ. a username of TJ. That shows you were right in there at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, at TJ. At TJ. It's like, wow, you must have been one of the OGs. <laughs> one of the OG TJs. Yeah. She's fallen for him already, she says. They arrange a meet up and Candice agrees to go with her as like a backup to be safe. See, they're not stupid. No. They're just a little bit, a little bit dumb. And this is before the days where you get, you know, taught about online safety in school because... People just figuring it out for themselves. Who do you think TJ was? I know, I know who it was. It's Todd. It's Todd. What Why do is you it, think the J, J stand for? I, I think I know. What do you think? Juice. No. Todd Juice Grimshaw. Yeah, Todd Juice. Go on, what's the J stand for? Jason. No. <laughs> Why would his middle name be the same as his brother's name? <laughs> I didn't just really I like the name Jason. Maybe TJ. Maybe they share a username because they don't understand how the internet works. <laughs> oh, will I be TJ? And then Jason's like, why isn't it JT? <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. But you're not. I'm not. Go on, okay. Todd's middle name. Come on. Um, uh, J- Javier. No, no. Um, J- Jorts. Proper names. Come on, Joe. Jorts. No. Um, J. J- There's only Jason. Jane. Oh, so close. J- John. No, that's J- my middle name. J- J- Junior. It's James. It's James. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that wasn't going to stay much interesting for much longer than that. Candice is furious. Obviously. He manages to talk her around. Her boyfriend's chatting up Sarah Louise when online. He promises that she, her, she's the one he fancies. I mean, it's all very well saying that, TJ, but why are you trolling on the internet? Mm. Isn't that like, I mean, you get arrested for that these days, don't you, for picking up 14-year-olds on the, on the internet? You do. He should be lucky. <laughs> Sarah tells Candies about her new chat boy, her chat room. Chat boy, <laughs> chat boy. Hey, that's what they called it in the nineties. I don't oh, remember. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Hey, do you want to be my chat boy? <laughs> that was this. This is two thousand and one. This was this is our year, first year of university, wasn't it? Yeah. So I remember quite vividly the first time I went on the internet and used chat rooms. And that was at college, so that would have been ninety nine. I don't. There's probably a good proportion of the listeners to this who don't even know what a chat room is. No, it's, it's a, bizarre, isn't it? It doesn't exist at all. Yeah. Anymore, like Yahoo chat rooms and and things. It was. Uh, quite the, the thing i remember one of my friends um was talking to somebody because we, we were all in the it suite in in college in the library and we were just chatting or playing solitaire and um my friend was like oh i fa- my i've i've been chatting to this guy on on the internet he's an american doctor <laughs> it's like hey, yeah right whatever he is this sure. was this was quite the finger on the pulse story i'm it was, gonna yeah. say wasn't it but 2001 having a, ch- a chat room story i mean I think a lot of people wouldn't have really understood how it, uh, how this was working. No, I mean, I, I think my family first got the internet in 1997, maybe. So this is only like you know three or four years after that, uh, and I don't think we were that far behind everyone else. So um, it was this is like probably a really early <laughs> issues story. Is, yeah. so Sarah Louise was the issues character, she wasn't was, she? Yeah. She was the she was the face of issues stories I mean, in early is. 2000 Coronation Street. My uncle's a serial killer, you know. <laughs> if you've been affected those, by yeah. this story, if your uncle is also a serial killer. Yeah. So she, so Sarah's like, I've got a boyfriend on the chat room too. His name is Gary. Not Gary Wynn, Dassey. Why would later. you pick that name? You can be anyone you like on the internet. Why would you say your name is Gary? He could have been called GJ. <laughs> Yeah, Gigi. 
Things take a turn for the worse when Sarah gets to meet up with him at his house. It turns out, he's, is he really called Gary? Yes, he's really Gary. Okay, he didn't lie about that, but he lied about everything else. He's actually 30. Mm. That was a great episode. Yeah, this that was, was when they I used think it was an hour long one. Teardrop by Massive Effect. Yeah, the end of the episode. Or, no, yeah, what, Sa- Massive Attack. Yeah, yeah, Sarah. Sarah. Is that right? No, it's not Mass Effect because that's a video game. No, I it? said it wasn't that. Yeah, she goes around the house and uh, and he's there and he's thirty and, and she's kind of tries to escape, but she t- uh, she she phones Candice. Yeah, who, Massive who leads, Attack. Candice leads the rescue party. So if it wasn't for Candice. Who knows what could have happened to Sarah? Though. Yeah, you can tell it was an issues-based storyline because they used a pop song for the for the credits. If they, if they had a pop song for every time they used the, had an issues-based story on Coronation Street these days, you'd forget what the actual theme tunes goes like. Yeah, you would do. So, hooray, she's been rescued. Thanks, Candice. I mean, I, I think this is ageist, and who's to say that he wouldn't have just been nice to her and bought her pizza and stuff? No, he wasn't. He wasn't thinking of that. Oh, I'm just I'm just checking. <laughs> so Sarah invites Candice and Todd to her camping trip. She goes on a camping trip with Martin, um, who is her Sarah's. Is it real dad? No, fake dad. Sarah's fake dad. <laughs> I think they call them step dads. Yeah. <laughs> it's my fake dad. <laughs> my real dad's got stabbed. <laughs> um, so did Ms. they have a nice time on the camping trip? No, Mrs. Stowe turns up and drags her off, saying, "I'm not gonna." Have you slutting around here in the camping site? She was just totally blinkered, Candice's mum, wasn't she? Well, she, I, she, did I think right, was, she did the right thing because Candice never got teen pregnant, did she? She did not get teen pregnant, no. Um, she, <laughs> it's it's like she's both hyper, like hyper protective in one way, yeah. but also mega neglectful. And I, and I think the idea we're supposed correction. to get from her is that she just doesn't know what her daughter's like. She doesn't have a good relationship with her daughter. All she knows is the rumour she's heard about Sarah, and she's like, oh, I suppose I better be a parent and get her away from her. But the fact that the fact Sarah. that Candice has grown up, you know, she's, she matured early and quickly because she had to. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like Mr. Stowe saying, well, I'll, I'll do what I can to be a mum. Well, I, I mean, but, I'm going to make up for it now by dragging her out of a camping trip. Mm. So, I mean, she did She did a good job. I say, good job, Mrs. Stowe. <laughs> Who knows what would have happened at that camping trip? You know what? You know what? It's called... Anything. Could have Anything could have happened. Storyline title for when Candice gets dragged from places. Stow away. <laughs> yeah. You can have that one. That autumn, Candice tells Sarah she's got a night and weekend job in a factory, even though she's too young to do it legally. So she starts skiving off work, uh, school so she can do more work. Awful. These industrious children stealing jobs <laughs> off of grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what sort of factory it was. I haven't got that information here, but... Um, maybe it was a, f- a chat room factory. I don't think they make those in factories. Oh, I don't know. Told what, do they, what do they make in the early 2000s? Two- USB sticks. Yeah, probably USB stick. Maybe she had to test them mm. and she had to see which side was up. Mm. And uh, broadband modems, all you know. Ah, oh, those CDs that you got on, got you on the internet. Oh yeah, AOL on yeah, AOL, AOL online. Discs, yeah, probably. so you like, would you like to go on the internet, but only one page? Mm. Don't go into chat rooms with people called Gary. No. So, um, Todd and Sarah again. See, this is where Mrs. Stowe was right here. Mm. They agreed to have sex in oh, Eileen's bed oh while gosh. she's away in Paris, but then they discover they don't really want to. And they decided not to do it. I don't know so why worried. I've written this in the note here because that's actually got nothing to do with Candice. With Cand, or is it Candice? Maybe, maybe it should have been Candice and it is. Sorry, Can- Todd was- and Cand. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Candice and Todd decide that they're well, going to bonk. Sarah's so loose. She's like, yeah, I've done it before. No, At nothing to one. do with Sarah. Right, Candice's secret job leads to her falling further behind in school. She has to resort to copying Sarah's homework. Who hasn't done that? When she, when their you teacher, copied Sarah's homework. I I always used to copy Sarah's homework. <laughs> um, that's why I didn't do very well in uh, some of my core subjects. <laughs> Not really, I was very good at school. When their teacher, who's, I like how you got to get that in there, just in case anyone's well, interested, listeners, Gemma did do well at school. I did do well at school. On her own merit and everything. Yeah, I didn't. Didn't uh, even copy Zero. Not really. maths, though. I did copy maths homework all the time. I hated maths. Mm. Did you know Rishi Sunak says we've got to do maths until we're 18? I have read this, yes. I'm not doing it. Glad we managed I'm to skip that I'm not doing it. One. I give up. I, I refuse. I refuse. Yeah. 
Mrs. Stowe's going to drag me out of school. <laughs> so, um, Miss, Mrs. Stowe did just, her job was dragging candies away from things. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> fires, volcanoes, teen sex, <laughs> yeah. chat yeah, she, rooms. She's probably gone on to work in the rescue service, hasn't she? Maybe she's a paramedic. Yeah. You don't know. Or a fire, fireman. One of those helicopter rescuers. A helicopter parent. <laughs> yeah, she's a helicopter parent. <laughs> Charlie Ramden. Ramsden. Ram, she's, Ramadan. Yeah, she's 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 their teacher. She finds you out. You have about written it. Charlie Ramadan. I think it just auto Charlie, Ram- Charlie Ramadan. <laughs> I don't know why they call me that. It's not my real name. So she um she's the teacher and she discovers yes. the answer are very are identical. Which if it isn't maths, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Maths or science, you can get away with it. Mm. Sarah takes the blame. I copied. I copied with friend marks. I think it was science homework. I think I copied his science Don't copy homework, homework because once. you don't learn properly. I was very, very good at school. I'm sure you can imagine that, everybody. But I did forget to do some chemistry homework once and copied it from Mark. What, and Mrs. Once? Burton found out. Yes. You got you did it once and you got caught. You're lame. Yeah. That is so lame. Only takes one time. Ask Sarah Louise. That's how she got That's pregnant. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I one don't know what she... <laughs> and it ruins your whole life. <laughs> um, Candy starts stashing clothes she's bought with her factory money at number eight. And Gail finds them. Thinks Sarah's stolen them. Sarah says they're Candice's because she's a grass, mm-hmm. as we're seeing now with this storyline with Stephen. Mm-hmm. And uh, before long, there's a, a showdown between Candice and her mum, and there's truth about her factory dog comes out, and Sarah and Candice fall out as well. Again, good this... representation of teen girls. I'm going to say, did you? Uh, was there a no. lot of falling out? I don't understand this. People always say girls always fight with each other, and they also have bad relationships with their mums. But I didn't have that experience at all. Well, I must just be have. brilliant. 2002. So, Candice says, right, if Candice finds out that Gail has been given the keys to the Ramsden's house. So this is their teacher, Charlie Ramsden, and her, her, her husband, Matt. And Gail's there to feed the fish or something, I can't remember. So she's got the keys while they're on holiday. And Candice is like, brilliant, hangout zone for the teens. Let's go around there. <laughs> Let's go and have some food there. Um... Let's have it as a yeah general slobbing them out place. And uh, so they, they break it. No, they get the key, they go in. Gail finds out and Richard Hillman, who's, you know, with Gail at the time, says, look, be lenient about it. They'll be fine. They're just kids. And so they, they get away with that. But Candice holds on to the keys because, well, she's had a key cut, so she's got a spare one and tries to get Todd to go round there with her. And he, I think, I think she probably wants to try again in the old hanky-panky department, but he's like, no, not going right. I've already been caught. Don't want to do that. So then Candice um, retaliates by seducing his brother, Jason. No. Right? So she's going out with Todd, but she bonks Jason. And no. That's, that's her first time. That's and terrible. I think I remember it. I think Jason, like, a bit, I think there was a scene where Jason comes down and was like, oh my gosh, you, that was your first time. So, um, yeah. What a charming, heartwarming story. Um, Todd comes round, realises what's gone on, so leading to the brothers having a massive fallout. Our teens can't do that kind of thing anymore. They always have angsty, sad issues-based storylines and they try to do anything exciting. Back in the day, they do, the, the main issue was fighting with each other. Fighting with each other and, and having it off with each other's sibling. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the word spreads the next day. Jason says, sorry, Candice, it was just a mistake. So she's... she's a little nose is put out of joint properly by that. So another falling out early on in the year between Sarah and Candice when Sarah says, I fancy Todd actually. No. Yeah. And because Todd's dumped Candice because of okay. the whole Jason incident. So Sarah moves in on there. They start <laughs> dating. Todd hasn't realised he's so gay loose. yet, of course. And Candice is um, quite smug at the beginning, at least, to find out that they have a rocky start. But they, they stay the course. So um, Candice then starts hanging around more with Aidan Critchley. Watch out. Yeah. Now he was the bad boy team. He was. He would have been vaping. He was he was brilliant. Watching watching him back on Classic Coronation Street, I always thought that, you know, I just thought he's not a very nice character. I didn't have that much of an opinion on him either way in the early days. But the the actor who played him was absolutely fantastic, I thought, watching it the second time round, at just being this like repugnant snotty little git. Snotty child who who was like too big for his boots and Swaggering. Yeah, he, that's it, that's it. He was a massive swaggerer. And Candice liked this. Yeah, she she likes people. <laughs> he, he was Provided. popular, he was cool, yeah. exactly. Um so she's going out with him for a bit. And um, Sarah gets annoyed. Well, not going out, just hanging around. I don't think that, that Aiden was particularly interested 
in any kind of long-term relationship with anybody. But Candy slights having him there by her side. And um, Sarah gets annoyed to find out about this and um, says, well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be friends with Aidan Critchley yeah. too. Yeah, if you can be friends with him, I can as well. Yeah. Candice finds out that Sarah and Aidan are spending time together. She starts to up her game and snogs him <gasps> behind Sarah's back. I what? know, I know. Two girls fighting if over him. she turned the around. Dream. So the girls are just there vying for Aidan's affections and Sarah gets upset when she finds that Candice has uh, done a bit of joyriding with him. Because Aidan at this time was massively winding up their teacher Ken Barlow he steals the keys to Ken's car <laughs> and is driving it around Weatherfield like Ken Ken's Barlow. getting traffic speeding tickets for yeah. times when he wasn't even driving and Sarah the little wet blanket that she is is like I'm not I, I, I wouldn't go that far I'm not getting in the stolen car but Candice does and they drive around together Next day, Aidan tells Sarah he's not really interested in Candice. It's her that he fancies. He's just playing these two girls off each other. So she's like, little, giving a bit of break. She's, um, what's the word? She's giving a bit of confidence from this. She takes a joyride with him and then they end up having a massive crash. Tragic stuff. Oh. Aidan, the scoundrel, yeah. escapes. Right. Practically unscathed. Leaves it. Sarah there in the car crash on her own. He runs off to Candice and says, right, you need to tell everybody that I was with you. I've just, (laughs) I was with you, no questions. And she's like, no, I've just, if you just left Sarah in the car with a massive car accident, after a massive car accident, I'm going to go to the police if she dies. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. She doesn't die, it's fine. Do you know about, do you know what Aidan Critchley's most famous moment was? Um, Not killing Maxine. No, punch in the face by Ken. In school, he winds him up so much. Ken punches Aiden in class, and Candice leads the class in agreeing that they didn't see anything, just to show that she's she washed her hands of him. Yeah, Sarah eventually wakes up, makes up with Candice. Um, Although later on in the year, Sarah. Um, starts sneaking food to aid and he gets thrown out of his house by his dad and he's he's sleeping I can't remember where it is maybe in the I think it was the closed down um, hardware shop which is now prima donna and uh, Sarah's sneaking in there and helping him out and feeding him and Candy's like what are you doing you utter pillock he's a he's a wrong one but Sarah as is still the case does like Soft a bad touch. boy oh no she likes a bad boy doesn't she but she's also you know Aiden Callum yeah she's Gary a, I guess she's dumb isn't she she, she is a bit the more I think about it you yeah. realise that Sarah She's is not dumb. the brightest bulb. No. <laughs> 2003, Gemma. Go. This is where we're up to in classic Coronation Street. Mind you, she takes so after you her mum, doesn't well stop she? listening if you don't want any spoilers. She takes after her mum. Gail's not really very bright either. She used to be, though. I don't think she did. Look at her, like, trail of broken men that she's left <laughs> behind her. Broken men. <laughs> in 2003... Candice convinces Audrey to let her have a job at the salon where she enjoys a rivalry with Maria and she finds it hilarious when an oversight with Mar- from Maria leaves Vera with purple hair. Remember that, that was on recently. Yep. Candice starts seeing a pizza delivery guy called Luke Strong and she gets furious when Maria starts chatting him up and even more so when she finds him on a date and she, she shoves a pizza in Maria's face. And that's probably Maria's best day. <laughs> She probably doesn't let herself eat pizza, but I'd make an exception. If someone's going to shove it in my face, then <laughs> I guess I've got no choice. The universe has decided I've, I've that I'm to eating pizza. Eat tonight. otherwise I'll suffocate. <laughs> I have to eat my way out of this problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stowe starts seeing a guy called Jerry. He's a bit of a dirty old man. Yeah, this was great. So th- this was Mrs. Stowe's final appearance. It's just been on ITV3, maybe even this week. So she. She starts seeing this guy called Jerry, who is um, a bit of a perv, a bit of a dirty old man, like you said. And um, we see uh, some really um, great scenes from Candice where she she runs away from home. She takes the salon keys from Audrey. She's she's staying there overnight because she's so terrified to go back home where this lechy man is living there with, with her mum. And um, It's kind it, of like what happened to Lauren. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Jerry turns up at the salon and is acting all innocent, saying, oh, Candice, she didn't come I'm home not last a day, night. What are, you, what are you doing? But Audrey sees through him. And Candice is like, no, don't, don't let Audrey's me. Audrey's like, why are you saying that? That's a really specific thing to say. Yeah. That's not the sort of thing <laughs> normal men say. I think you are a dirty old man. And well, he like, gets God sent away it. with a flea in his ear. Yeah, and Audrey tells Candice that she can move into the flat with Biz and Maria, the flat above the salon. Mrs. Stowe turns up the next day and she refuses to believe Candice's stories about Jerry just completely cementing for the final time that she would choose anyone or her own happiness over her daughter. And Audrey sends her away and that's the last we see of her. Well. Bet she's wishing that she um she she didn't become estranged from her daughter when she ends up going off with status quo. Miss Maria's probably like not Maria, so Candy, she's living the high life now, isn't she? It's probably it's styling the quo. Mum would love it. Are they not all dead? No, they're still they're still going. Okay. Maria takes the opportunity to wind Oh, my notes don't make sense there, Can- do it? Deez Candice is take- takes the opportunity yeah. to wind Maria up by saying, I'm going to take Nick out on a date. Who's yeah, Ma- Maria Maria was going out with Nick and now Candice wants to, is, goes out with her. Make matters worse. Audrey and Gail approve of this. <gasps> I can't believe it. Nick ends up seeing Maria behind Candice's back. So Candice, Candice buys him a ring engraved with C and N on it, which is clever because that corresponds to their names. Mm. She um she builds herself up to think that he's going to propose to her, but instead he dumps her, which is a completely different thing altogether. And uh, he, she he's annoyed. Yeah, he, annoyed he, Maria. he he dumps Candice because actually he's he decided wants he wants to Maria. go out with Maria. Maria doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. And then that doesn't last very long. And they're soon soon snogging each other, and she's convincing him to stay in Weatherfield. And then Candice discovers that Maria's back with Nick, so she slaps her. In the face. There's a nice little rivalry. rivalry between Maria and Candice. Because I think Maria... Yeah, it must Maria's be right. So Mar- Maria is older than Candice. But not by a lot. No. Um, I think Maria kind of looked at Mar- Mar- Candice and was like, you're just a you know, trumped up little girl. Was this girl. before Maria was glam? No, no, no. Maria was well into her glam stage okay. at this point. Yeah. Okay, just checking. Right. 2004. It starts off with a New Year's auction at the Rovers where the men folk were, were auctioned off for, for women's whatever they Women, wanted to for do. For women's with them. liberation. For their, yeah, to do with with them what were they pleased. And um, Candice bids for a night out with Jason. And the pair realise they actually quite enjoy each other's company and agree to go out a date again. But um, she, he's, by this time, and I'm looking forward to this happening on ITV3, Charlie Stubbs is on the scene his his boss and he's giving Jason oh. this terrible advice about how to treat women. treat treat him mean keep him keen I suppose and Jason who's a bit of a lunk is uh puts his foot in it and um yeah he follows some advice that Candice isn't particularly appreciative of Jason's so, only got two brain cells and they don't talk to each other yeah um so they they um split up for a bit do Jason and Candice then they make up again oh good and um Candice uh, there's a little story coming up where she riles up Eileen by putting a Lonely Hearts ad in the Gazette for her. Um, the, she's also um, plays Cupid with Jason for Eileen by trying to get her involved with Harry Flagg, remember him? Um, and then the relationship comes to a grinding halt when it is transpires that Jason's latest piece of advice from Charlie is to start seducing the people whose houses you're doing building in. And uh, Jason does a bit of work for Gail, Mm-hmm. And then comes on to her. Right. <laughs> like Jason was all of, I mean, Charlie was all about seducing these lonely old housewives, wasn't he? You know, for a bit Not of. Not old. Well, no. Sexy. Sexy, sexy, mature housewives yeah. for a bit of afternoon Milfs. delight. Exactly. And um, Jason thinks, oh, Gail, fancy Gail's a bit of. like that. Fancy a bit of, how's your father? Candice does not like this uh, news. No, and then not dumps many people do. Jason. Like that. As well, she should. So before long, though, she's seeing this guy called Tim Marston, who's a, who's a sales rep. But he's not a very nice guy. He's like trying to avoid taking her out to restaurants. He just basically he just wants Candice for sex. And he's like, come on, let's, let's go to bed. Let's go to bed. Um, thank you very much. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Um, now I'm going on a skiing holiday with my mate. See you in a few weeks. Um, oh, so he's just, he's just not a very nice guy. Uh, he says as well, like, oh, I, I told you I was going on a on a skiing trip. You've just forgotten. You're just an airhead. He, she was like Gaslighting. so. Gaslighting. She, mm. she, she, 
I think she just wanted a, a decent father figure in her life, and maybe that's why she was going out with all these older men. Older men, and she she was putting up with it with this terrible treatment from Tim at this point. He comes back oh, late, Tim's says awful. that his says that his plane's been delayed. <clears throat> oh well, I'm back home now, Candice. Let's go up to bed. And she's like, No, I want to see you. And he's like, Oh, I'm not not interested then. And and disappears off. Maria though starts getting suspicious of Tim. Um, and because she finds a wedding ring in his jacket pocket, don't ask me why she was rooting around in his pocket. Who knows? He's like, "Oh yeah, this is this this is for my brother. I'm not really married." And Candice, because she's so desperate to, you know, be loved. In, be loved by this Tim guy, she she believes him. However, before long, Tim's wife, Gemma, With Gemma and Tim, classic Carrie couple. <laughs> she turns up and's like, "Who's the slut that's been seeing my husband?" And that is the wording on Coropedia, so I assume they say that on the episode. And Candice, uh, her eyes are finally opened, and she ends up emptying a bottle of conditioner over his head. But that's expensive. And um, I would have done that. And but, well, it was it was it had been um, befouled by Maria, who had put a load of dustpan scrapings inside oh, as good. well. So it it wasn't, it wasn't particularly nice. And Candice makes the decision that from this point on, I'm only going to go for decent blokes. That's no fun. Well, um, Sarah starts getting jealous of Candice later in the year because Audrey's looking to find out, you know, who who's gonna who's gonna take over this salon business when I'm gone. You know, twenty years still later, there. she's still there, still she there. Find, she hasn't still found Still not anybody. sorting out her will. She keeps changing her mind. This about is things, why obviously. they didn't set the series Succession in Weatherfield. Why is that? Because no Nobody fucker dies. will retire. <laughs> um, anyway, because so Audrey starts sending Candice on like styling courses and everything, and Sarah Sarah is not enjoying this because she wants to get the salon for herself. Candice's next conquest is Warren Baldwin, another. Kind of nobody of a character from the Baldwin clan. He was the uh, he's a footballer, wasn't he? I think that the out of all of the the new Baldwins that were that came into it, he had the the shortest amount of time on screen. But um, and so obviously Candice, don't be a footballer, footballer my street. age on the street. Yes, please, let's go out. Um, and she, but it turns out that he has <clears throat> recently been sacked from Brentford FC, and he's currently oh. unemployed. So she dumps him. Yeah, good for you. Shallow Candice, come on. So there's another fallout for Sarah and Candice <laughs> later on in the year when oh, Todd dude. finds Sarah in bed with Jason. Um, I mean, Candice fancies Jason at the time. Right. I, don't I don't understand girls, honestly. Jason yeah, says, sorry, oh, Candice. Excuse me. Sorry, Candice, about that. Um, maybe me and you should go to bed together or go for a drink together. One, one or the, the other, one or the other so maybe both, confused. not at the same time. So things that, uh, things go well between Candice and Jason, but then Warren gets hired by Weatherfield FC, and so she jumps dumps Jason so she can be going out with a footballer again. And she she just spends a few months like flaunting the fact that she's she's a fella's a footballer to all and sundry. Um, yeah, good for you. Good, get that cash. Yeah, get that footballing cash. So. Unfortunately for Candice, Warren gets a kiss from Katie Harris under the mistletoe at a Christmas party. Candice gives him a really hard time about this, but because she's enjoying living the wag lifestyle so much, she just she kind of lets it slide. And she presents him with a ring as well. She likes she had a ring for Nick. She had a ring. Now she's got a ring for him on his eighteenth birthday. She gives him a ring and says, "Oh, this symbolizes our commitment together." If you want it, she was just desperate to keep this guy. Um, but then she gets evicted from her flat, so things start to go wrong there. Um, but she moves into number seven to be with the Baldwins. Well, you say that she got evicted from this flat because she was trying to set up a rival business, which is quite an important. I did miss plot. that. Yes, I have written that. She's trying to. Yeah, she's, she's trying Audrey to start off her own. Clearly doesn't like this. Does she no. fire her? As she must do. Yes, she's I, already fired. I guess she's 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 fired or something. Whoops. So two thousand and five, Leanne teases. Candice. First mention of Leanne in this podcast. Today. Ever. ever. <laughs> uh, she tells her Warren's going to dump her if he makes it to the premiership. And so she's like, well, you know what? You won't dump me if I'm famous too. So I know what I'll do. I'll become a TV weather girl. <laughs> I love it. This this Candice really is... Um, she just like... In like my her. mind, she, she's representing the 
the the vacuous side of teenage girls, isn't she? she? Was Absolutely, very... perfectly fame hungry. Yeah. This was the time of you know, this the, was, yeah, the Big Brother TV. reality TV. Anyone could be famous. This yeah. this was the era of people you starting need, to get famous on the internet. Don't need to be talented. You yeah. just need to get your face there. There was no YouTube or anything yet. No, no social media, I think. But and get yourself in front of a camera, yeah. and you could be famous. Yeah, Candice was absolutely the perfect character to Brilliant. play this. I love this. Yeah, she prepares a routine to show the Baldwins and it's not very good. I don't I don't know how many girls dream of being a TV weather girl. Not anymore, but I, I'm pretty but that sure... That used to be a thing. Well, it was, it was a glamorous thing, wasn't it? Flaunting your pointy stick and pointing at maps of, a, of the UK. And moving... Remember they used to have... It used to be magnetic and they used to like peel the cloud off and slap a sun on it. I, th- I think they probably moved past that. I think these. they've done it now. Oh. Yeah. So she gets sacked from the salon... Uh, because she's being too meteorological. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like, I don't, I don't want, I don't need the, the salon. I've, I've, I'm destined for higher things than you, Audrey. She's saying, Sorry. Audrey, I'm not doing this cut and blow dry because it's high humidity outside, and therefore <laughs> the hair will go frizzy as soon as this person steps out the door. Hmm. So it's a waste of time. And Audrey's like, don't tell everybody. Well, the last draw for Candice is when she burns Betty. Dear old Betty under the hairdryer. And then she's like, well, I don't care. Salon's just for pensioners and kids anyway. I'm out of here. She's not wrong. She applies for a TV presenter's course in the paper, which is amazing. <laughs> where, do you, where do we find these these days? Do you, how many people got hired? Do you think that's how um, Trevor McDonald got his start? Or Davina McCall? Yeah. She's like, yeah, I just saw an advert in the paper, how to be a TV presenter and now I do Big Brother. Mm. It's great. So... She goes, um, she, she gets accepted. She gets an interview to be a eye in the sky traffic reporter. This is just brilliant. I, this would, I wish this happened in real life. I would love to just go, all right, I need a job. What should I be? A, a work at Asda. Fly around in a helicopter and say what the weather is. I work at Asda. I would be like a delivery driver or I could go work for the Royal Mail or maybe I'd be a ballerina. Or uh, yeah, i just become a TV presenter and fly around in a helicopter. It doesn't do so well, though, because like, she gets air sick. She's hopeless. She's sick everywhere. Sick over the pilot. But they're like, you know what you would be good at? Weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she gets a weather girl job. Dream. Do you think there's just, like, so all the weather girls would just reject eye in the sky traffic reporters? <laughs> I'd rather be a weather girl than a traffic reporter. Yeah, would you? I mean, there's not a but lot fancy of variation. No, I would hate it. There's not a lot of variation in traffic, is there? It's either it's traffic or there's not traffic. Is is it a thing still? <laughs> like, whenever I think of Eye in the Sky traffic reporters, I just think of Arnie Pye off The Simpsons. <laughs> do people still do that? Or well, we do we just do radio, satellites? Do we? Anyway? I, didn't, I never listened to the radio. I've got but no I'm pretty sure they do thing. do traffic reports, but I don't think they send somebody up in a helicopter. I love it. Yeah. So, um, she does get this weather girl job, but she's uh, mortified because... Tyrone and Maria spot her dressed as a weather girl modelling wellies in a shop window. Yeah, That's not, well, not as glamorous sense, as she was made. Well, she got a weather girl job, but she was also doing a bit of modelling in wellies. I don't know. Why I don't would know. you want somebody, a live person, in a shop window with Wellington boots on? I know how they work. I don't need them Takes demonstrated. So, uh, for some reason, Tyrone and Maria make fun of her or, or think it's this stu- I'd be I'd admire somebody who got paid to wear Wellington boots <laughs> it reminds me do you remember the time when um, Jason was uh, like a Christmas elf and Tyrone yeah. and Kirk I think it was found him de- prancing See, around at the supermarket modelling wellies I say is, is better than being a working in a salon that's what it is at the Hunter well is definitely yeah I mean there's not a lot of people in the country who can say they're professional Wellington boot models <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think that was how Kate Middleton, when when she was Kate Middleton, I think she did modelling. She she modelled a pair of boots. They That's weren't it. Wellington, they were leather boots. Yeah. There's definitely a photo of her doing that. So can, she could have been, Candy Stowe could have been the next Princess of Wales. Think of that. Uh, she, she did... She'd have grabbed the opportunity if it had been made available to her. Can you tell imagine you that. if we'd had Candice, Princess Candice? I mean, to be fair, what happens to Candice at the end is pretty outrageous. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is like the Weatherfield version of being princess. <laughs> Diana. Um, Audrey, she ends up going Maria back to Maria pokes Audrey's, fun at her she? 
And Audrey says, do you want your old job back? So she carries on working for Audrey while also going on the modelling auditions. Just and like Raquel. Warren soon starts tiring of her attitude. Um, at an audition, she's told she's thick as two short planks and she doesn't get the job. Why do you need an intelligent model? What is she modelling? Like physics? <laughs> what are you talking about? What, what, what have I got to do here that I need to know anything except how, how to look beautiful? I don't. That's know. discrimination. You've got to let models be thick, otherwise, what's what society else is come to? Um, she dumps Warren after he's dropped from the team, and Frankie calls her a backstreet little tart with no is talent. Her mom, is, is Frankie's mom, the mum, yeah. Warren's mum. Candice is gutted um, to hear that Warren's been headhunted by this Spanish club called Real Aquila. Aqu- Aquila. I don't know. And she tries to get back with him, but he's like, no. She was, she's just so massively superficial, I'm busy. wasn't she? I've got to learn Spanish. <laughs> After hearing Adam's going to inherit Underworld one day, Candice is like, well, I know how to solve this problem. I'm going to go out with Adam. He invites her out to lunch in his swanky new car, but she dumps him after it breaks down between them because he's put the wrong fuel in it. I remember that really vividly. It was this swish yellow and black car. It was like really fancy. And yeah, he puts he puts petrol in it, but it's a diesel car. And Candice is like, it's like, well, people we can't call me both thick. be thick in this relationship. Yeah, this isn't going to work out <laughs> because yeah. somebody's got to know how to do taxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, who'd have thought that one day he'd become a hotshot mm. lawyer? And that was almost it for Candice, wasn't it? She gets her final exit story, which is one of the most bizarre that Coronation Street has ever had. Well, status quo's hairdresser lets them down. They're playing at Les and Silla's wedding. Status Don't quo. ask why; it's too convoluted. Candy steps in to help them. And they're like, you know what? You've done such a brilliant job. And you, you you were regaling us with these great stories about Wellington Boots and the weather. We want to offer you a full-time job because you can read the meteorological charts and tell us whether we're going to get rained on when we're doing a gig. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I can. So she accepts the job. Within a week, she's gone. She's on tour. She's got a new life. She she gets married eventually. What a success story. She moves to Hollyoaks. Bad things happen there. But she gets an award for it. Yeah. And that was it, wasn't it? That was the the end of of Candice. Ended up as status quo's hairstylist. I mean, you couldn't make it up. Well, somebody did make it up. but You could make it up. You you could and did. You couldn't have it in real life because it's too unrealistic. But anyway, that's the end of Candice. Somebody is. Somebody is. Do you think that that status quo's real hairdresser was like, this is rubbish. Everyone's making fun of me. <laughs> she couldn't do my job. So, um, that, yeah, that was the end of Candice. It was reported earlier that year in June 2005 that Sanderson had quit her role as Candice. And um, she quoted, I have had the most fantastic and memorable time here at Corrie. I made the decision to leave as it is time for me and Candice to leave the cobbles on a high. I really am sad to be going because I'll miss everybody. I'm excited about what the future holds and I'd like to thank everybody for the fantastic opportunities that I have been given. So she jumped before she was pushed. And to be honest, I don't really blame her. As great as... Not, was it a great character? She, she was. She was a good character. But... Even though, you know, we just talked about all her stories that she had there, it just never felt that she had anything that was really, really meaty, was it? And and the fact that she has gone on to do so well in Hollyoaks and other things means that there was clearly massive potential there. Um, the producer at the time, um, Tony Wood, said, Candice is a character with a great deal of ambition and we felt it was not believable that she would stay in Weatherfield forever. At the same time, Nikki had indicated that she wants to try a hand at other projects. It therefore suits Coronation Street and Nikki for the character to be written out this autumn. Nikki has been a real asset to the show and the writers have had great fun writing for Candice. We wish her all the best for the future. Um, And she'd say, I'm just as... Oh no, this is something else. This is something else. So, that, that was it. The what? report, sorry, I just forgot my notes. My notes are wrong again. My notes are wrong all over the place. Basically, there was rumours going around that um, that she was really hacked off, basically, that she wasn't getting the good stories. There was, um, she, 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 she apparently said, I think it was a boyfriend that was saying it, saying, Nikki would say, I'm as good as anybody else. Why don't I get all the good stories? Um, she, he was saying that Nikki was getting jealous of all the attention that Tina O'Brien and Samia Gardi Longchambon, whatever she was back then, was getting. Nikki denied all this, but 
That's a very, Who knows? I, it was an, yeah, it was, sorry. It was an, it was an ex-boyfriend that was saying that's this. That's really a horrible thing to talk about somebody else's private conversations. Well, this was, he, he kind of sold his story to yeah, the exactly. paper. Um, I don't think we should repeat it. Well, I've, I've done it now. I know I've you have. It. You like gossip. I don't like gossip. I think it's a right underhanded thing to do. Oh, well, sorry. Um, and um, I don't don't appreciate that kind of nonsense. Maybe she did feel that way. Maybe she didn't. Anyone could look at her and say um, that she was underused. And she's proven herself a hundred times over, considering her recent award mm. for her work in Hollyoaks and honestly Corey would be lucky to have her back I think they, they really really would we, we talked about this briefly on last week's um, podcast in the main podcast when she <clears> got <throat> the award and I was saying oh, you know, how long does Hollyoaks have left it's moved off of Channel 4 now or it's going to be moving off I think I can't remember whether it started ratings are very low I think it's still it's got this teen audience in the palm of its hand though that I think there's always going to be some people that want to watch her at Hollyoaks, but yeah, <laughs> make it sound like a mystery. And, and you know, it, Who are these it, it gets seeing you know the soap awards, some of the stories that it gets. There's you know, there's there's good stuff that goes on on Hollyoaks, but if it did it ever end, it does make me wonder whether whether she would ever want to go back. Um, although you know, she she did say in 2013. I've never even thought about going back to Corrie. She says, <clears throat> I left seven years ago. I've done so many other things in that time. That's why it doesn't even feel like a crossover going into Hollyoaks. I've had a complete career between the two soaps. Um, and even in 2015, she said, no, nope, not being tempted away from Hollyoaks. This is when Sarah Louise came back to the show after a little while. Yeah. And, and, and Nikki at the time was saying, no, I, I have moved on. I don't know I whether... Oh, well, fine. Yeah. Um, they're, I mean, they're... That, that's fine. She's done a great. I mean, the thing about it is that her character could still slot back into Corey if you know. It, it really, not... really could. She she's could walk right back the, in there. Pretty much every character she's ever interacted with is still on the show, except for Jason. Mm. Mm. It's it's actually yeah, quite Maria's crazy. Yeah, Maria's there. Sarah's there. Todd's still there. Yeah, absolutely. Eileen. Um, I, I I think I think she'd fit back in perfectly. I, I'd be. She she'd feel. She'd fill a rosy-shaped hole, I think. Um, I mean, there was a, there was a story in the Star in two thousand and twelve saying that she was coming back then because this was after Rosie Webster left had just left again. Becky Granger had just left, or Becky McDonald, she was then, and the 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 reports were that Nikki was going to come back into the role to to fill that kind of character, but nothing ever came of it. Um, there was also a rumour that she was going to come back a few years before that in 2007 just for like a brief appearance for Sarah's wedding to Jason. And ITV, this was this was a trumour, Gemma, because ITV had said... yeah, I've never even heard of that. ITV had said, yeah, Candice is going to come back. She's going to be at Sarah Louise's and Jason's wedding. But it never happened. Um, the, I mean, Nikki would later go on to say there were, there were scheduling issues and they just couldn't make it work. But they definitely had... You know, they had the idea there. But anyway, like you said, she's she's in Hollyoaks now. She's been there 11 years. She, she's, unlike in Coronation Street, has really been given the meaty stuff to get her teeth sunk into. We've not seen any of it apart from the clips that have been on um, like the Soap Awards and whatever. But Nick, Nick, Nikki's character in Hollyoaks has had domestic violence. She's given birth to a child with Down syndrome. She's had a partner accusing her of being alcoholic. She's not. She's um, that that particular character then had MND. So Corey's had that as well. She's buried his body in a city wall after he was murdered by his granddaughter. She's had a miscarriage. She's had Munchausen syndrome. Recently, she was attacked on a night out. So they they have you know thrown everything at this character and Hollyoaks, and she's done really really well. So very very pleased for her. But that's that's kind of it for Candice. So for character who we've not had a whole lot to say about beforehand, we managed to squeeze a whole hour out of it. Yeah. So if you thought that Candice did nothing, you're wrong. You're wrong. And you know, I said she wasn't very interesting when we first uh, did the started talking about her, but I changed my mind. I told you you might do. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm very mercurial. Yeah. I like her. She's good. Um. And that's it. Yeah. That is it. That is it. Bring her yeah. back. Have a friend for Sarah. We'll leave it there.